welcome. Uh, it's Wednesday night with Beef. I have a special guest tonight. I'm going to let Kate introduce herself. I'm going to go over here and check the laptop because we are, uh, we're not only the talent, but we are also the production crew. So I'm going to be monitoring and uh, going through all the comments on my and moderating over on the laptop. Take it Perfect. away. Hi, everybody. Uh, Kate Schultz, the consulting dietitian for the Colorado Beef Council. So thank you to Chef Jason for having me uh, be a guest this evening. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about all of the versatility with personal pizzas uh, and just recognizing it's back to school, though it's very warm outside. Uh, he did just have to turn off the swamp cooler, so we both laughed. Yeah. I wanted to warn you uh, that if either yeah. one of us pass out, don't worry. <coughs> yeah, don't we, worry. We'll we, be okay. We did shut the swamp <laughs> cooler off. So if you see us start to do that dance like you see people do at weddings, and then you're like, they're going to pass out, they're going to pass out we probably will. So uh, welcome. We're, uh, we're having fun today. And I'll tell you, um, kids are back in school. It's weird. My, uh, both my kids are out of school, right? They're in college. And it's wild watching all of my friends who have younger kids yes. posting that all the kids are going back to school. And I remember a very important thing. When my kids got out of school, they were like beasts. They were super oh, hungry, so hungry and yeah. they needed a snack. What, yes. what is your son like for his after school oh, snack. You know, uh, well, to be completely honest, um, like he loves fruit snacks, goldfish, yep. um, you know, all of those things. Same. Yeah. So do all, I. Uh, right. So you know, do I. Yeah. Right? So does my husband. Um, but yes, the challenge is, is that getting him home and then figuring out if you're going to have a big snack and wait on dinner or if you want to have dinner kind of ready to go earlier yeah. on. You want to graze. And yes. So that's one of the things, and that's where this comes in so perfectly because this could be done as a snack, yep. or this also could be done as a meal in and of itself. Yep. Or you could have it for both. Like you could snack on it after school and then decide that you want to have it for dinner a couple hours later. And what we're talking about is personal beef pizzas with a twist because uh, we take the standard beef it's what's for dinner uh, recipe for beef sausage, which is super amazing. We're going to show you how to make that. And then we kick it up a few notches uh, by making some personal pizzas. And I'm, we're going to show you some options we have uh, because I think in order to satisfy those picky eaters, yeah. we want to give them lots of options. Now, uh, a couple ways you can find all the recipes we have featured tonight. Uh, you can go down in the description section. We have the link for today's recipe. Or you can go visit my friends at Colorado Beef Council by heading over to cobeef.com. Uh, over at cobeef.com, you can click on the tab that says cooking. You'll find recipes more uh, than you could ever imagine. And you'll find the beef locator map because I know that you are savvy consumers and you're now buying local beef. We want to help you figure out where in Colorado you can buy uh, local beef. So head to cobeef.com, click on cooking, find that beef locator map. You can find amazing Colorado beef for your fridge, freezer, and belly, right? Yes, absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, and so many wonderful recipes. So yep. This was one kind of with it being in August, back to school is on our mind. Um, so some, some kids went back to school last week. You said that your daughter, um, Ella's going, she did see you. She uh, starts next week. I don't I don't want the water to Terrible, yeah, start. I don't want me to start crying. we just talked about that. Yep. But yeah, but this is the time, right? So now we're back to structure somewhat maybe i mean summer's yep. kind of that time where we just yeah. kind of wing things but now it's like okay you've got to be at school at a certain time yeah. so many different activities so really being able to provide ideas like this that can be completely individualized customized um i think it's also great this is a fun recipe that kids might also want to get involved in sure um and the research and the studies show that by being able to cook with your kids yeah that you know kind of enhances their uh interest in maybe trying new and different things and it's always you, you said the exact like totally perfect thing during the summer the train is off the tracks <laughs> oh, absolutely. right that train is like driving down the highway or in a field <laughs> or through the pasture uh -huh. yeah. and now um, we've gotten the train back on track yes. we're trying to get the kids organized and i always like to give them things like our kids always enjoyed having a snack my wife was like the queen of, of snacks. having snacks ready for them uh, but then as my kids age got a little bit older, they wanted to make their own. They wanted sure. to be involved in it. What I love about this is we're, we're using things you have at home. Oh, like absolutely. we have the Instapot um, air fryer, which you can use to, to brown the pizzas, whatever, we're using uh, just a standard burner, which will, I mean, they'll be safe. They're not going to get yeah. hurt. But let's talk versatility. Sure. I brought some of my rowdy friends with me today. 
uh, when I was shopping at the grocery store. Listen, I, I, I did some weird things, right? We've got beef, which is wonderful. Pizza sauce, have to have. Cheese, have to. Have to. Yes. But then I was like, kids like olives. Oh, absolutely. It's so wild that kids they like, like to put them on their fingers. Yeah. Right? Yep. yep. So I have some green olives, some sliced Perfect. black olives. And then I thought we could amp it up. Yeah. And add some vegetables. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, there's nothing that you can't put on a pizza. Yeah. Well, and you can try. Yeah. You want. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, there's just lots of different things and different ways. And you can also, like you said, kind of whatever is in your freezer or your yep. refrigerator, you yep. can also use. So it's kind of one of those things. If you have a good base, which there's so many oh, different we've ways got a base. Um, to use a base. I love this. Yep. Uh, you've got everything pretty much covered here. So I just went nuts, right? Like I'm a kid at the gas station with their parents' <laughs> credit card. So I bought some English muffins. Yes. Because most people have these around. This is yeah, a great breakfast snack. Absolutely. You can butter them up, put some peanut butter on there, jelly. Hit Your kids absolutely. can take it in the bus, on the road, in their car. But uh, English muffins are great as well for a pizza base. Yeah. This is the palette, right? Yeah. Then I got, let me save those till last. Okay. Because people are doing keto and yes. they want less carbs, yes. bagel thins. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a bagel's a lot of carbs. Right. And if I'm talking, I want them to have a snack. I don't want them to fall asleep by having 850, you know, <laughs> mil, uh, uh, carbs, right. right? Grams of carbs. And then I did sandwich thins, which Perfect. I love these. I do too. These are my favorite. Yes. I don't want. I, I'm old. I don't want to eat a lot of bread anymore. But uh, those work out great. However, brioche buns. And I've not ever had. I mean, I've had a brioche bun, but not a brioche like pizza. So this is a hot dog bun. Yes. Because I was thinking, yes, everybody likes them round, yeah. but kids love squishy buns. That's true. So the brioche is cool because the hot dogs are top split. You can pull it open. Oh, you can add a little sauce the in there. You can add your beef in there. Awesome. Pop them on here and put them in. Awesome. So we have a lot of different options, yes. which I think most of these are pretty common in people's Yeah, pantries. I also heard just this morning I had a coffee with a, a girlfriend who was talking about how her daughter made kind of a build your own pizza last night using just a tortilla. Yep. And then it kind of got the discussion of where, oh, well, I like to use, you know, the non bread. So, I mean, pretty much anything, even yep. if you just had like a slice of bread, yep. you could use that, toast it, you know, yep. put your pizza the toppings. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. They are. And we're just trying, like, they're hungry. They're like ravaging through well, the cupboards and we're trying and they, to get them something that will and settle them down. They love pizza. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so this is something that you can easily do. It's economical. Um, you know, you could just have all of these ingredients on hand and really have it, like you said, either as a snack or, you know, beef it up for a meal if you want and to as well. Yeah, and it's fun because they can come home and relax. Yes. They can come home. They know there's a snack that yes. we either we, the parents, are making or they get to make right. themselves. Absolutely. And they get a snack and they calm down and that, that protein kind of settles them down a little bit and gets their mind kicked in gear. And then all of a sudden it's like, all right, I got to get homework done. Oh, yeah, and or then, go to football. Or, that's where my son is at go. tonight, right? Practice so then time. that's also the challenge of, you know, you've got numerous kids and maybe different yep. activities and different times for that. And so being able to provide a good snack when they get home that is going to be a great combination of protein, you know, fat and carbs is so important and will really help sustain them until their next snack or dinner. Yep. All right. Let me see here if we have comments. Yes. We have Dennis Busso. He said he's pulling up a seat. Thank Perfect. you, Dennis. We appreciate that. All right. All right. Uh, we're gonna do the this? beef. We're gonna do the beef sausage. So okay, I've it, not made this. I've not made the. Beef this sausage is super before. cool. And what's great, I, like, the recipe calls for a pound, but I'm gonna make two pounds because I'm actually gonna leave some in the fridge. We're moving, right? We're yes, moving our said, location, our, our studio. studio. It's beautiful. So thank you. Well, we want to eat tomorrow, so I promised my Luke that works with me that we would have some food. So we can uh, power through the day. You're a smart man. You might want to put on that swamp cooler and then also feed him. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> it. All right. So 80-20 ground beef. Yes. You've heard me talk about why I love 80-20. I have heard you say that. As the dietitian, I sometimes would recommend different, right? but 80-20 definitely serves its purpose. Yep. I think the thing is, is we can, this is going to work with no matter what yep. type of ground beef that you use. Um, but yes, 80-20 for this, especially, you know, for children, um, absolutely fine. You're still getting that great amount of protein and all those yep. other nutrients. But if you want to choose a lower fat option, that's also available. What I always say is, when you look at cooking ground beef, figure you're gonna lose about 10% of that fat content sure. through what we call wash. That fat kind of washes out. It'll be what's in the pan. It's usually what people drain. So when I was looking at the grocery store today, uh, I looked at 93.7 and I looked at 80.20. And I thought to myself, if I cook 93.7, it's gonna be a little bit drier, that's fine. I can counter that with a little bit sure. more sauce and a little bit more cheese. But I also thought, you know what? We'll just do the 80.20. We'll give them a little bit of extra fat. We're yeah. gonna, it's really going to be about a 90-10 when we're done, and we should be set. Absolutely. So, Great. 
Here's the cool thing. Go ahead okay. and I'll get some gloves. We'll, Thank you. We'll glove up, right? It's kind of weird touching food. I know. I think the same. There you go. All right, glove sharing. All right. Well, you know, I want to have just another layer of on because, yeah, you know, because just in case it's not warm enough. We're just not hot enough. <laughs> right, let's just, yeah, let's put on some hey, you rubber should put gloves. On a, you should put on a, a <laughs> heavy black chef's coat. I wish that I had a hairnet too, maybe. <laughs> I'd have to wear a beard Just net. joking. All right, so here's the best thing. Super easy recipe because we're just going to add the beef. Perfect. So we're going to add, though, two pounds of beef. And then we're going to start uh, chopping right, so that yeah, up. And so you've got your seasoning here. So tell me a little bit about what you've got. Go ahead. I'm going to turn that guy down a little bit. Turn that down. So easy seasonings. Uh, recipe calls for uh, fennel, Italian seasoning. Kind of, we are making a beef sausage or a beef sausage, if you will. So uh, I want to add some things to it. We have onion, garlic, salt. Uh, uh, black, cracked black pepper. We have some Italian herbs with a little bit of fennel in there as well, just to give it that Italian uh, flair to it. So Perfect. we'll put those to the side. Now, guess what? We didn't add any oil to this because we have that 80-20 fat. We don't need to. We absolutely don't need to. So while Kate is cooking that and rendering that fat off, we'll go ahead. Uh, what I want to do first is kind of maybe take it to about halfway cooked. Okay. Uh, and then as it starts to get crumbly and mealy a little bit, we'll add that seasoning okay. and let that fat pull it around. Um, let's talk toppings. Marbled cheddar cheese. Again, if you want pizza cheese, pizza cheese. Your kids want something spicy, pepper jack. Guess what? This is also your palate. You could turn that ground beef into Cajun profile. Oh, you could absolutely. turn it into spicy. You could make quote unquote sloppy joe mix and do a whole different kind of uh, personal pizza as well. Uh, I just got a comment from my wife that said, bring some home for dinner. So, uh, you Smart know, what, woman. Yes, Smart you woman. know what we'll be eating at our house tonight. We'll be enjoying some uh, personal beef pizzas. Now, she didn't tell me if she wanted the hot dog version or the well, uh, bagel. She's still got time. You still got time. We have time. To, to All right. Put in your request. So we have the cheese for topping. Um, that beef is cooking up very, very nicely. Pizza cheese or a uh, pizza sauce. I just picked a basic pizza sauce. I kind of like pizzeria style. It's a little bit sweet. Sure. Uh, and this is pretty well uh, mixed up. There's not chunks in it because I didn't want to freak any kids well, out. I was going to say, and kids tend to maybe be a little right? adverse to chunks, so good idea. And we talked earlier about stealth health, right? We did. We, we talked did. about we sneaking those veggies in years ago. <laughs> that was what they called it, stealth yeah. health. Always, um, always an option to be able to, you know, I mean, even if you just have, let's say, frozen vegetables that you yep. want to cook up. Um, I've seen... Broccoli, cauliflower, you know, carrots, you puree it, add it into your, uh, you know, pizza sauce. It's yep. kind of a way to to hide it. But also, you know, we do want to encourage the kiddos to, to try new things. Uh, yep. This was an interesting thing uh, that I that. heard from a school nutrition dietitian. You know, they're school nutrition. They're trying to try new recipes, have children, uh, you know, eat school lunch, have it be well balanced. Um, they said that in school nutrition, and I've seen anywhere you know at home if you try to introduce a new food to a child sometimes you have to introduce it seven times well so seven to ten yeah. in school though yeah maybe up to 40 different times yeah, before they lunch 40 before times, right? they're going yeah. to decide so yep. right so it's just one of those things where don't get discouraged as a parent if you try something and yep. you know your kids don't like it the first time it could be for many different reasons um but yeah i mean especially with this i love the idea of being able to serve it alongside a salad or just have fresh fruit available as well to pair it with. And don't you think if we get kids involved in cooking their own stuff, yes. they're probably more likely to participate Absolutely. in eating it as Absolutely. well? Absolutely, yeah. And, and obviously we can't sneak veggies in while they're cooking it. Right. But I think if we get them maybe inspired to do the cooking, and then we can maybe influence them with some decision making by saying, hey, do you want to add some pureed carrots or do you want to add this or that to it might or, be an opportunity or just having it available for them to eat alongside right yeah. i mean part of it is just having it available for them um good. yeah this smells wonderful i wish you guys could could smell right. this so we're about three quarters of the way what we're trying to do is obviously make sure we cook that 100 percent of the way we want to get it up to that 165 uh, degrees just to make sure that that ground beef is fully cooked uh, and then when you cool this down use whatever you're going to use today when it comes time to cooling it down, make sure you always cool it, cool it in a shallow layer, uncovered. Uh, and I will do maybe 20 minutes on the counter to purge some of that steam uh, and heat and then into the fridge to take it the rest of the way. And then once it's cooled, cover it. And I would say you're probably looking at two days maximum for shelf life Absolutely. once it's cooked. But 
it's definitely something you could cook once, eat twice because absolutely, especially like two pounds, right? I mean, yeah, two pounds. depending on your size of, yep. of family, you know, this could definitely be something that you continue to, yep. you know, either make more pizzas or more snacks out of it, or and think of it, it you know, it's pizza breakfast. today, could be taco meat tomorrow, absolutely, could be uh, breakfast as could well, be breakfast, totally I love breakfast, to be able to get in a good amount of protein at breakfast, you know, yep. um, and that was the thing. So even you know, though we're talking about this in kind of the form of it being a snack for kids when they come home from school. This recipe is fantastic because, you know, just even in one serving, it's providing right around 29 grams of protein, which research has shown, you know, really recommending about 25 to 30 grams at, at each meal. Um, and then this was also a really good source of, of iron. We had a webinar today just talking about the importance of iron in adolescence and, you know, just for, for numerous reasons. And so this also is a really good, um, a really good source of iron. So And we need iron for everything. We need yeah, we like, need we need iron to make sure that we're, you know, have enough energy and it really helps just in so many different functions. And research has shown that if, you know, we have any type of iron deficiency anemia, then we're just not at our best. So this has uh, kind of depending on of course, you know, the beef and then what other toppings it can provide really right around five um, milligrams and, and that's a great amount. Here's a totally random yes, question, sir. and I hope I'm not calling you on the carpet. No, I'm not. I'm not uh, calling you out yes, or, or anything or putting you on the spot. That's yes, what I mean. I hope I'm not putting you on the spot. Yes, sir. Um, do you like? I feel like I crave meat. Oh, like yeah. if I don't like, I, I obviously I love meat. I love yeah. all proteins, like. But I really, I, I'm a, I'm a, a meat eater yeah. for sure. Yeah. So I feel like if I don't get, and when I travel a lot. It's pretty interesting, you know, how I kind of go through my week of travel, but it's like day three or four. I'm like, man, I need, do you, like, is that an iron thing or what? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, just all of the nutrients that, you know, the beef provides, the iron and the zinc and the B vitamins, uh, the choline, the folate. It's just so important to really help to sustain you. Um, it helps to keep you, yeah, it doesn't look. That looks amazing. Amazing. And then, like we said, pull it to the side. You can drain the yeah, fat, absolutely. let that fat roll. Yeah. Done. We're well, done. It'll continue to cook off because, well, it's still warm. It's it's very warm in here, if you can't tell. Um, what? It's warm in here? It's it warm, warm in here. here. I know. All right. Again. Let's go ahead and bake. We're going to turn this guy up here. So what do you want to start out with first as far as the Well, uh, I, uh, the I'm not sure if you noticed, but I did put all of the other stuff um, aside and yes. left the pizza buns here. Perfect. The pizza bun. Pizza Perfect. Buns. I'm excited for or this. Or not pizza, hot dog buns. I'm excited so, for this. So um, we're going to make pizza buns, right? Personal beef pizzas are great. I think we should do a couple of those too. But this is super cool because, again, I'm just trying to get my kids excited, right? Oh, I know. I want them to have something fun. And I, here, here's what I think is pretty cool. When you, when you make your kids a fun snack and they go and their friends are there, and oh, then their yeah. friends go home yep. and they're like, did you go to this person's house? I had the best snack. And all of a sudden, the parents are like snack heroes. Absolutely. Because they made something and, pretty solid. And you want to be the house that has the best snacks, right? Yep. You want to be the I mean, house where the kids want to come right. and play. So that's fantastic. All right. We got two comments. So Annie said bring some home for dinner. Yes. We're good. All right. So cool thing here. Split top. Uh, I'm basically going to pull these open. We'll load them with some beef. Okay. And then we'll top them with our other things. We've got the oven preheating as well. So you want the beef to go in first? I think so, yeah. Okay. We get a spoon. That would be helpful. Small Thank one. you. Thank you. I have that as well. Yeah, I think we'll do the beef first because then we'll put the pizza sauce on top. Okay. That way the beef is hot. The pizza sauce kind of drips down. The cheese melts. We'll put some accoutrement on top and we awesome. will get it done. All right. I'll hey, don't forget loaded. too, if you are watching this video, uh, not today, not on Wednesday, uh, feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comment section. We always go back and interact and answer your questions and comments. So we definitely want you to, uh, don't worry about if you're not catching us live. It's That's just right. like we were there. Ask your questions and we'll uh, get everything answered for you as well. This smells so amazing. It does smell so good. Got bun number three there. Okay. Let me All right. Up. So let me get my peppers to the side here. So what were some of your girls' at state? I mean, I know you said that, you know, they're maybe my, graduated now or, you know, young adults, but what were some of their favorite pasta, snacks? Pasta, chicken, um... I mean, pizza was always a, a yeah. hit. Like everybody always loved pizza. Just, I feel like pizza is burgers. Just, yeah. fam my family loves, loves smash them. burgers, grilled burgers, smoked burgers, yeah. uh, ribs. I mean, we, we eat we eat, a, we eat a pretty good amount. You eat pretty well. I mean, I think we do. You kind of know what it you're depends. doing. You kind of well, know what it, you're doing. It's when I'm cooking. I'm not always home to do a lot of cooking. I understand. So, all right. You're a busy guy. You're on the A little bit of pizza sauce. Okay. And we'll just dab that in there. 
And you know, I always tell people, add as much or as little as you want. That pizza sauce is gonna get down in those buns pretty solid. Here's my other trick too. Yes. We can open those guys oh, up a perfect. skosh okay. and then add a little yellow pepper. We've got some yellow pepper in here just to give some crunch. I think peppers taste pretty solid anyway. So. Oh, absolutely. All right, let's hit it with some cheese. Okay. And I'll tell you, um, if you are um, ready to see what we've got coming up in September, make sure you hang out with us uh, in September. We'll post that date. We'll set up our event on Facebook for you as well. Uh, and we'll come up with some other fun stuff. It is tailgating season. I was say, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing some games. Yeah, we're going to do some Lots tailgating. Games, Look at right? this. Look at that mm, right that there. That looks delicious. So personal uh, beef pizzas, we didn't say what they were. What they were. It's just a beef pizza. It doesn't say English muffin pizza. It doesn't say yeah. any of that. So we're doing a little hot dog pizza, but you could always top all the other stuff as well. Uh, and then again, you know, you stick the olives yeah, on your fingers say, and I'm whatnot. Gonna do, I'm going to do a couple of... Black olives. Black olives. Do this here on the middle one. I am not even going to slice these. I'm just going to put them on whole because I think here we go. I like that little bit of sharpness. And awesome. I'm pretty. I think. I think it's interesting too. Kids nowadays, and I don't mean nowadays like when I was 20, uh, but kids nowadays are exposed to a lot different food ingredients. Oh, absolutely. They eat differently. They yeah. crave different things. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like we. If you if you go in the grocery store, we used to have one hummus on the shelf. Oh yeah. And now, now it's like 400 so yeah. different ones. Absolutely. Right. Same as going through the meat case. Yeah. You have your ground beef, which satisfies everybody's need for burgers, smash burgers, et cetera, Tacos, chili, taco yeah. meat. Yep. Uh, but then you have all these different steaks, and you're seeing skirt steak and flank steak and all of that. Again, trying to stretch my beef dollar because now that kids are back in school uh, and, and you're, and you know. groceries are just. Groceries are expensive. Expensive, right? Yeah. And so I think that's one of the things, um, you know, we're, we're hearing People are wanting more ideas for cooking at home. And so this is a great thing where, you know, people tend to maybe celebrate with pizza nights, right? Like yep. where it's like, okay, it's been a long week. Let's, you know, grab pizza or order in pizza. And there's really no need to do that when you can make, you know, so many great options, uh, pizza options at home. Yep. All right. We're going to throw those guys in there. All right. So how and are again, you going to put them in there for? Um, you know what? I think I'm going to set it for about five minutes. Okay. Just to make sure I'm going to keep an eye on it here. Awesome. I was going to say. Yep. Yeah, I'll okay. keep an eye on it. Okay. Let me double check Great. here. Any Mark other? Collins says he loves our tricks and tips. You are oh. very welcome, Mr. Oh, Mark. I am very glad. You yes. are very welcome. Okay. We'd love to be able to do that. So. Yes, sir. These are the, the one thing I like about this, it's pretty kid friendly. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not hot on the exterior. Yes. I don't have to worry about my kids that are, you know, eight, nine and above getting. I mean, obviously, I'm not, not going to let my three year old, four right. year old get into this. Right. But kids that are eight, and nine that are starting to be inspired to cook. Yeah. This is perfect because it's touchscreen. I think they're pretty tactile when it oh, comes to. They do everything on their iPads at school, yeah. right? I mean, yep. they're better at tech than I am for sure. I mean, I don't want to say that, but <laughs> so we can turn this on. We can get them up and running. We just need to make sure we have a hot pad holder for kids. Uh, but what's great is you've got these nice little nonstick trays yeah. that go in there as well. And your kids can make them uh, basically assemble and cook this themselves. Absolutely. And you know what the recipe for this says you can make it a day ahead of time. And then obviously, like we said, use it in breakfast, all those I different things. But maybe you have this uh, what we call mise en place. Maybe you have this mise en place set up on the counter like we did in some pinch bowls uh, and your kids can come through. Did we you want pizza sauce, sauce. Yeah. yeah. And then your kids can come through and kind of build the order. Well, I think that's the other thing is like, you know, parents are busy. Uh, they might not be. There's so many things that you can prep ahead of time yep. and just have in the refrigerator ahead of time for them. Yep. Um, you know, and just say, hey, kids, here this is and, uh, you know, help yourself and get to it. And Hey, look at that bird. Ah. Got thrown off by yeah, the, no, uh, you're totally bus. right. It's it's it was so it was always so wild just watching like my wife would have kind of snack platter set up, and it was weird because if if our kids came home uh, and were hungry, they would just eat whatever was quick and easy. Whether and, and I'm not saying mac and cheese is bad or right, crackers, right, right. but if you are concerned, if you're the concerned parent, you want your kids to eat healthier. It was wild because our kids, if it was there, they ate it. Yes. If they had to go foraging, it was a different oh, diet. And it's even it's even like, you know, same thing even with adults. Like, if you have produce, you have mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables that are yeah. already cut up and ready to go, you're so much more likely to eat them than if you have to go into the refrigerator. So it takes up maybe a little bit of time initially yep. to prep them, right? But it can make a huge difference in people actually consuming it. So okay, now I'm we're gonna, always a fan. 
Yes. No, we're going to be sneaky. Oh, what we're going to hide sneaky? the peppers. We're oh, going to hide the peppers. Oh, under the cheese? Under the cheese. Under the cheese. I like it. Nice. We'll show those nice, kids. Hey, I'll teach those done. kids. That's right. Stop running through my front yard. Get out of my grass. All right. Are you ready for the cheese? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. I can't even tell. Look at that. And then we will grab a hot pad holder. Because. So what are some of your favorite pizza toppings? Oh, pizza. Is there anything you don't? Is there anything? Is there anything you my, don't like? Do do like Canadian bacon and my pineapple? Favorite pizza are you okay with that? Listen, we're we look at those. Right oh my there. gosh, those are beautiful. Look at that color. Isn't that amazing? And those, oh yeah, it smells tell so me, good. It smells. Amazing. And I feel like I've gotten acclimated to the heat. I'm yeah, good now. I'm right? not. I'm not gonna pass out. No worries. I might. All what? right, we'll go ahead and add those guys in there now. You know, pizza toppings for me. Listen, I'm gonna say it. Pineapple belongs on pizza. I agree. I agree. I like. I pineapple love on pineapple. My pizza. Um, I agree. You're also a Hawaii guy. So. I, yeah, I love pineapple. Yeah. So last night we had pizza because Annie and I were both craving pizza. Yes. And I had chicken, artichokes, mushrooms, red sauce, uh, salami. Because I think salami tastes different yeah. than pepperoni. It's like grown-up pepperoni, and then balsamic. Mm. And like I opened the pizza box and was like, oh, so good. Just different. Yeah. I'm like I'm salivating because I'm, I'm a food guy, so I really pick what I want to eat on like the flavors I desire. And this smells absolutely it incredible. It smells great. And I'm the, really excited to try the I picked uh, the brioche, the brioche because yeah. I think brioche is amazing. I was going to cut this for us to. It's nice and crispy. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, and this would be great too. Because the like cheese is stuck to our hands. A party, right? I mean, yeah. this would be so easy if you're going to have kids over for a birthday or any type of activity, yep. um, again, just kind of let them build their own if they want to, or if you want to just have it ready to roll, that's also awesome. Yeah, and if you see what we did, we have um, these guys set, so you could just put them on a platter. Absolutely. Or I you could the give bite them size, right? finger food. Yeah, the finger food. Have some Let's fruits try and vegetables this. Should alongside we try one? there. Yeah, Probably hot, to. so we should be careful. Okay, well. Mm. That's very good. Real Very good. Fun. I yep. love the brioche bun. I've not yep. had that before. So So it's like hot dog bun pizza. Well, and two things that kids love. Hot dogs and pizza. Mm -hmm. Put it together. Yep. What a perfect that, combination. That came out good. Again. Very good. Don't forget down in the description section we have today's recipe for you. Um personal beef pizzas. And it shows uh building these on sandwich thins, but I think we have a lot of different options from Absolutely. English muffins to bagel thins to sandwich thins to brioche buns. Um making this a really good fun thing if your kid like brioche is so rich and eggy and buttery like kids obviously are going to love that but if you want to be keto sensitive there's keto things as well Absolutely. if you're gluten-free tons of different options yeah in the grocery store for gluten-free um quesadillas you could do these I mean, on quesadillas yeah. you could do, and corn do quesadilla tortillas. pieces yeah. your corn tortillas. and corn or yeah. flour yeah. yep yeah. so very very easy we hope you uh found some good tips but just a great way, again, to uh, get these on the plate, on a platter for your kids, make some easy snacks. And there are um, other wonderful recipes available as well um, at www.ketobeef.com, um, as well as veganchoicefordinner.com that are specifically for um, yeah. back-to-school ideas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, packing different lunchbox ideas, snack ideas, dinner ideas, and a lot of them really do encourage you uh, to get your child involved. So yeah. I think that's so yeah, you, very important. If you go to beefitswhatsfordinner.com or cobeef.com, uh, up in the search engine, you can type in snacks, kids. Yep. Uh, you could type in ribeye, New York. You could type in all the, those keywords, yeah. and it'll bring up a lot of different recipes. So if you typed in, you know, kid friendly or kid, it's going to bring up every recipe because they tend to. Uh, and they have a whole section that's called best um, or back to school, best back to school, I think is what it's called. I like um, it. So anyway, yeah, there's just, it, it's such a wonderful resource. Also, just depending on if you really want to do more. Um, you know, ideas for your um, air fryer, right? You can just mm -hmm. type in air fryer, air fryer and it's gonna give you all kinds of ideas. Um, so really depending on what you have available at home and what you want your child to get used to cooking with as well. So if you wanna say, hey, I really wanna get them comfortable with air fryer, you can type in, oh wow, you can type in air fryer and it's gonna give you a plethora of, of uh, options. Here's what I always, here, here's me. I gotta take my glasses off so I can see. Hold on just a minute. Here's what I love about when we do these recipes. I don't try to have a lot of stuff done ahead of time. You know, maybe some things I do yeah. uh, just to, to kind of speed it up because we don't, obviously don't want to uh, drone on for an hour. But we literally have been on for 28 minutes. Yeah. And we were able to yeah. whip up a couple snacks. Take out the talking time 
and literally from cook to done, you're oh, yeah. probably 15 to 20 Absolutely. minutes. Absolutely. Yeah. So fast to prep, easy mm -hmm. to prep, light ingredients, which I think is always important because parents are busy. You don't want to have to grocery shop for 752 <laughs> ingredients. Yes. And you may only use once, right? Like that's the yeah. worst part. You buy something, you're like, oh, well, now I need this for this recipe, and what am I going to do? Yeah. So this is just really the epitome of something that is not only going to be healthy, it's going to be fun, um, completely personal, per individual, uh -huh. completely yeah. individual. Personalized. That Personalized. Yep. Personalizable. I, I, it's I, hot. It's it hot. Is so <laughs> and the, our brains are cooked, and Thank we you. can't even speak English. You can individualize. Yes. Yeah, you, you can, can personalize 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 too. Individualize, yes. So look at this. We have sandwich thin pizza, which, I mean, again, you could take this little guy here, cut it into quarters, and everybody gets, you know, little wedges and on so a plate. how great would this fit into a lunchbox the next day, right? I oh, mean, if this was cool? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. That'd be perfect. Leftovers, yeah. yeah. Again, that cook once, eat twice. Right. I'm a big, we're, we're big fans of it. Um, we always like to cook once and then have some, some leftovers in there. And as I get older, I kind of like a couple nights of leftovers. Oh, me too. It makes things me a little too. bit more fun. Absolutely. So, well, thank you so much thank to our you. friends at Colorado Beef Council. Thank you for thank joining you for us. Thank you for having me. I would um, love to be here. And as always, like I say, thanks to our friends at Colorado Beef Council for letting us do this every month. Coming up next month, September, we're going to be talking tailgating because we want to get you some fun ideas to take on the road. Maybe we'll work on a recipe that's good for you to cook in a parking lot, uh, but also works great if you want to platter it. Uh, for your friends as well. And then um, don't forget to head over to cobeef.com. It's Colorado Beef Council website. Tons of information there, including the beef locator map, which is going to help you find amazing Colorado beef for your fridge, freezer, and belly. And I will tell you, I was sent home with some uh, ground beef from one of my favorite ranchers. I can't say them. I okay. can't say names. Can I? Sure, I can. Crocus at Red Angus. Well, yeah. So they sent names. me home with some ground beef. Yes. And it was just amazing. amazing. I'm a huge, I love Angus. I think Angus beef's beautiful. I think Red Angus has that. Just, just it's like they're really, really good, but I think there's like a little competitive edge on that Red Angus. But ground beef is great, and and I always tell people, don't be afraid to buy local beef because oh, you think I'm gonna have a lot of ground beef. There, this is another great way to use it. We talk tacos, we talk chili, we talk pizzas, we talk um, burritos, we talk breakfast, we talk sausage. I mean, there's so many ways to use that. So I think this is great because ground beef is always a good part it's, of your it, diet yes, and it delivers so what you need. Yeah, so. so versatile. Well, thank you so much for thank having you. me. Appreciate it. I, thank I, you. Appreciate it. I'm sorry you had to sweat to the old beef okay. in here and I'm going to turn the swamp cooler back on. Who but I thought that it, you know, it'd be this warm. We're back to school. We think yeah. things are cooling down, but it, it feels like July. But you know what happens when it snows? We're all like, oh my God, I it's know. so cold. I know. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you thank in September. You. Shut off that video feed. We'll see everyone in September. It might be snowing in September.